So we're finally concluding the culture festival arc of My Hero Academia. This chapter pretty much put an end to the festival as we saw. We saw how Eri smiled obviously last chapter and then this chapter we get to see Class 1B's play to some extent at least. We didn't really see the whole thing. We got to see some parts of it which I'm gonna get into soon but we also got to see the beauty pageant which I'm really happy about. I did say last chapter I believe that I wanted to see the play and I wanted to see the beauty pageant and we got to see both. So I'm really happy about that you know we get to see some of the other activities at the festival instead of simply focusing on what class 1a was doing so on that end i think this chapter delivered pretty well obviously we had some stuff with Eri as well as some stuff with la brava too but i'm gonna start by talking about the whole thing with class 1b's play because there were a few things that some people in fact i think most people are gonna be able to pick up on like all of those references that we had like we had i believe we had references from harry potter we had asgab from Harry Potter we had a whole thing from Star Wars with um, you know I am your father we had Lord of the Rings with the Kingdom of Gondor I'm pretty sure there were a few other things as well in the play that they performed that I can't remember at the top of my head now but so basically their play consisted of a lot of references which to be honest is not too surprising especially from Horikoshi because as at least I know I think a lot of people also know this Horikoshi is a huge fan of Star Wars for instance as we've seen in the past he has named certain stations or areas from places in Star Wars so now we got to see that he's not a stranger to some other things like Harry Potter Lord of the Rings and so on and so forth and you can even see the crowd reacting at it like someone even says you know it's way too much but at the end of the day you know everyone laughed it was a good play so class 1b didn't exactly ridicule themselves instead they did get some sort of credit for what they did I mean they did perform well I would say they performed pretty damn well especially if people are saying it was as enjoyable as it was right I mean in a situation like that the majority rule kind of applies even if that doesn't necessarily mean squat in the eyes of a professional now the second thing that I want to talk about of, of course that's gonna be the beauty patient because the beauty patient is something that I kind of wanted to make a video on at one point but I ended up not doing so simply because of the fact that we were so close to the end so I knew we're either gonna not find out about it or we will find out about it this chapter so I decided not to make the video but this chapter pretty much covered what I wanted to discuss in that video it contained you know the beauty pageant and the three main contestants that being Kendo, Nejire and the other third year student I cannot remember her name but something interesting that I didn't really know before was that she's part of the support department so in a sense she's quite an important character for the school at least has been throughout her three years of being there and we even see she has some pretty the intense gadgets like we saw this tank looking thing that looked like it was representing her face so you could say she has quite a large ego but at the end of the day she didn't win and that's kind of what a lot of people were hoping she wouldn't you know we wanted to see a different winner we wanted to see someone else win a lot of people were saying Nigeria because obviously it's her final chance to win the beauty pageant so I guess people just wanted her to win because of that now me personally I kind of expected Kendo to win but at same time I didn't necessarily root for Kendo because Nejire is definitely a more interesting character than Kendo in my opinion however the reason why I thought Kendo was going to win was because of the fact that in some cases in fiction it doesn't necessarily have to be a beauty pageant it could be any type of contest you have three contestants right you have the main contestants that being in this case Nejire you have like a supporting contestants on the good end of things which is Kendo in this case and you have like his main rival which is the other third year student and at the end of the day the supporting character wins but the main contestant doesn't complain simply because her rival didn't win right that's what I thought was gonna happen but turns out Nejire took it by storm or well at least she won I don't really know if she won by a large margin I imagine so probably but at the same time I wouldn't be surprised if Kendo was pretty close in terms of votes because well they're both pretty swagging looking I guess I mean personally I'm not really a Kendo fan but that's just me I mean if you like Kendo that's your thing right I don't care so that pretty much concluded the festival itself because I mean obviously we did see some short shots of like Bakugo and some of the other 1A students participating in some of the minor events from other classes but as far as the big events 
when the events that we had known about, like the whole thing with 1B, 1A, and then the beauty pageant, we got to see those things in this arc. Obviously, we did see like a small shot of what looked to be some kind of a horror house when we saw Shinzo participating. So we did get to see Shinzo this chapter, although it was very brief and he didn't really say anything. We just saw him in a panel, which you could argue isn't screen time at all. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is, of course, Eri, because Eri, although we already knew she smiled, you know, it's nothing new this chapter, but we can really see how her personality has taken a very dramatic shift, in my opinion. If we compare how she was acting a few chapters back and how she's acting in this chapter, we can really see how Eri, as a character, she's a transformed human being. She is a much more joyful person, she's super happy, and she is comfortable around people now, it seems, you know. Kind of like she said to Deck, you know, like at first, you know, she was a bit skeptical. You know, it was a lot of loud noises and stuff like that. But as time went on, you know, she kind of adapted in a way. So now she seems to be a lot more accepting and a lot more comfortable around people she doesn't seem to know very well. And especially like crowds like this. Now, obviously, she's not completely healed mentally. Like the whole thing with overhaul isn't just going to go away. But it's something that she has, I guess, kind of learned to put behind her in a sense. But at the end of the day, it's always going to be with her. Now, one thing regarding Eric that I really found to be funny, but at the same time really fucking creepy in this chapter was obviously when Deku was giving this candy apple to Eri and we saw this expression on Eri's face. She's like, oh, it's even sweeter. <laughs> You know, she, she really gave off a really different persona when she was looking and smelling this candy apple that Deku had brought her, despite the fact that Mirio couldn't seem to find any candy apples anywhere. But you see, Deku, he's resourceful. He wanted to make sure that she was happy and that she got what she wanted. So he went out of his way to get her a candy apple, even though it seemingly didn't exist anywhere. Through the help of Sato and through the help of, you know, his own means, I guess, he managed to procure a candy apple without having to buy one directly, I guess, but that's okay. I mean, obviously it's Deku we're talking about, he's a main character, and he cares a great deal about Eri, much like Mirio Tugada, but at the end of the day, I guess Mirio Tugada just didn't think of the same things that Deku did, like, Deku may have thought that, okay, if I can't really buy one directly, I guess I'll just have to come up with a way to get a candy apple, even if I have to make it myself, or at least to some degree. Because he did mention he got all of the ingredients and he got some food coloring from Sato. Well, he borrowed it, to be fair, but at the end of the day, he's never gonna see that food coloring again, because it's going to be within Eri's belly very soon. But yeah, I really did like this chapter, especially since we did get to see these kind of interactions between Eri and Deku you as well as seeing how Tugada is just at the in the background really surprised you know at how he was able to find this candy apple and so on and so forth we also see Azawa being around because obviously he is Eri's caretaker it's only reasonable that he would be around Eri at all times especially in a, in a time like a festival when everything is like really crowded and really you know all over the place not really a surprise the last thing in this chapter that I'm gonna talk about is La Brava and Gentle because we got to see them this chapter again, which isn't too much of a surprise when you think about it. But at the same time, a lot of people may not have expected to see La Brava and Gentle already. Now, the reason we got to see them is obviously because we needed to see some more of them at the police station when they're being interrogated because La Brava is being interrogated and so is Gentle. And what's interesting is that they're actually talking to La Brava about her abilities as a hacker. What it seems like. They're asking if all of her abilities are self-taught or if she learned them through some other mean and she explains that they are self-taught and stuff like that, which is kind of interesting, at least in my opinion, because that means she didn't really have anyone teach her, which makes her pretty smart. She's she's a very intelligent person. So obviously some people may argue, you know, how did she end up on this path? I mean, at least if you didn't already know her backstory, in which case I would argue, of course, why, why, why are you reading this chapter? but let's not talk about that. But what I want to mention is something else, which is how they mention that they are going to find out if gently speaking the truth when it comes to whether La Brava has been brainwashed because obviously they can, through like, I guess, shrinks and stuff like that, like they can probably find out the truth, you know, did La Brava seem like she was helping out Gentle on her own or was she in fact brainwashed? Because this is something that may play a big part. I made a video on this whole thing when it came to La 
Brava being brainwashed, I believe, and I'm really curious to see what they end up coming up with, because obviously if they are as resourceful as they say they are, and they can actually find out the truth, then Gentle's sentence may be considerably less significant, but that also means that La Brava may be getting a more severe punishment than we may have previously thought. I don't think she's gonna get anywhere near Gentle's sentence or Gentle's punishment, no matter how you slice it, I don't think that's really a possibility in itself because of the fact that Gentle is the one on the video, you know, they have video proof of Gentle. La Brava never really appeared in the videos, in fact, the only mentions of La Brava is her name and the fact that she was at the scene at this time, I think. So La Brava is definitely well off by comparison to Gentle, no matter how you slice it, like there's no way you could ever come to a conclusion that they are gonna get the same punishment. If that happens, something is absolutely not right. Anyway, I'm gonna end the review here because that's really all I wanted to mention in this review because I just wanted to give my thoughts on the conclusion of the festival, Eri, and of course La Brava and Gentle because of the fact that these three things seem to be the most significant in this chapter, arguably the only things that happened this chapter because this was more of a conclusion to the arc sort of thing. We may be getting more La Brava and Gentle next chapter as well, I don't really know, I mean we may be getting to know what's actually gonna happen between them, I kinda hope so to be honest, but I also wanna get back to the League to be honest because we haven't seen them now ever since. The overhaul arc ended and I'm really curious to see if we're gonna get something more about Gigantomachia soon because we did see how Gigantomachia was kind of teased before the culture festival began when they captured Kurugiri and so on and so forth so I really wonder if they're gonna introduce him really soon or if it's just another tease that's gonna be left off and we're gonna see Gigantomachia appear much later in the story. Anyway let me know what you think down below in the comments and as always if you did be sure to Detroit smash that like button if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. This has been Chaotic Plus and remember everyone, Toga is waifu, Toga is laifu.